Good evening, good evening. It's time again for Sharp Points. This is a program in which we believe what Proverbs 27 and 17 declares unto us, that iron sharpeneth iron, so doth the man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So you and I are here tonight so that we can sharpen each other, strengthen each other, build each other up, fortify each other for our next level in God. I believe that your life should improve because I'm around you and my life should improve because you are around me. We help make each other better because two are better than one. So we thank God, amen, for this night. I want you to get on the phone tonight, move swiftly, because we only have 30 minutes and I want to make all of this count. Now, you know I have more than 30 minutes of message prepared for you, but we want to make sure that each and every Thursday night, we come on from 7 o'clock to about 7.30 sharing the word. And of course, by the time we do all the announcements, it's a little bit over 7.30, but the message itself it's about 30 minutes of pure word from God. You see behind me, amen, the balloons because September the 20th was my birthday. And tonight, amen, is your last night to get in on this sowing seed into my life because I know that I'm good ground. And I know that when you sow seed into good ground, you are destined to get a harvest. I won't tell you how much to sow, but if you want to sow a seed to me for being up here, sharing the word of God with you each and every Tuesday at 730 on I mean, every Tuesday night at 730 is our Bible study. Every Thursday is sharp points. And every Sunday morning, you can watch us right here on Facebook Live beginning at 1030. Now, if you are anywhere near Tarboro, North Carolina, we want you to get in your car because we believe that a church alive is worth the drive. I want you to get in your car and join us at 936 Abermall Avenue. Now, of course, we believe in social distancing. We believe in the mask and we believe in making sure that your temperature is checked. And so we do all of that at our facility. But at the same time, we want you to come be a part of the gathering because where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, he promises to be in our midst. So I'm telling you, there is nothing like being in the presence of the Lord with your brothers and sisters. So come and join us each and every Sunday morning. Now our services start at 10 o'clock promptly. So you need to be there about quarter to 10 or a little bit before 10 so you can get you a good seat and enjoy the presence of the Lord and enjoy the fellowship with your brothers and sisters. I believe that if you are on time, then you're late. But if you're early, you're on time. So come on, be on time. Come a little early. Enjoy so you're not rushed, so you're not stressed out, so you can relax. Amen. And get a feel of the word of God, the mood of the Holy Spirit that's going to be moving in our midst. Amen. We will be delighted to have you there each and every Sunday morning at 936 Abermall Avenue. In fact, amen, as I said to you on Tuesday night, Sister Linda Brunson had put together some wonderful uh, shirts that says N-O-L-C-C, and it talks about a church alive is worth the drive. And of course, amen, hopefully again, Sister Linda can put her information on this particular platform so you can have it and begin to go and get what you need in the name of the Lord. Also, again, on Facebook Live, you can't be there. If you're from Africa, New Jersey, some other city or state, you can watch us on Facebook Live beginning at 1030 sharply. Thank you so much. Let's get ready. Amen. To have a word of prayer and go into tonight's message. Father, thank you for wisdom. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for the input that you have given me so I can give to your people. Thank you for sharpening us tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Again, get on the phone, text somebody, call somebody, email somebody, make that connection with your family and friends. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button. Amen. So you can stay connected with us because we want to stay connected with you. All right. Let's go into tonight's message. Tonight we're talking about, 
amen, staying mad or stay mad at the devil. We're going to talk to you about stay mad at the devil. Amen. We're going to talk to you off that subject. Now, for the last past two Thursday nights, we were talking to you about how to break the jaw and the teeth of the devil. In fact, we gave you Psalms of the of the enemy, which we know our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our enemy is the devil and those that were with him. Now, we gave you Psalm 58 and six. Now, I'm going to just read these scriptures real quick and go over these points so we can get to this new information as we're talking to you about stay mad at the devil. It says, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O God. The Psalms is talking about breaking the teeth of the enemy. Because we talked about how we need to break the teeth and break the jaw and the teeth of the enemy. We have a responsibility and we must take courage and be bold to break the jaw and the teeth of the enemy. So he can't chew, so he can't bite us, so he can't afflict harm and danger against us because we've broken his jaw and his tooth. Look at Job 29 and 17. Job 29 and 17 says, I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. That's what David did. David plucked the spoil out of the lion mouth and the bear mouth. He got his sheep out of the mouth of the lion, amen, and grabbed him by the beard and killed him. He killed the bear and he killed the lion. And so he knew he could defeat Goliath. Also, Job 4 verses 9 and 10, it says, by the blast of God, they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. So again, we see in the book of Job, we see in the book of Psalms that God is talking about breaking the jaw and the teeth of our enemy. Now, again, during the time of David's writing, they fought against flesh and blood. David was a warrior, a mighty warrior at that. But you and I, according to scriptures, do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual wickedness, principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in high places. So our fight is a spiritual one. Our battle is a spiritual one. But you and I have been called and summoned by God and brought out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, brought out of darkness into the marvelous light so that we can do spiritual battle. Now, we say that there are six simple ways to break the jaws and the teeth of your enemies. Now, I'm going over this real quick, so I'm getting to tonight's message, which is stay mad at the devil. Now, listen, we break the jaws and the teeth of our enemies with the voice of God. That's number one. Then we said we break the jaws and the teeth of our enemies with the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus shed his blood. Jesus gave his life. Jesus died on the cross that you and I might know that through and by his sacrifice, we have the power and the authority and the ability to break the jaw and the teeth of the enemy. Number three, we break the jaw and the teeth of our enemies with the covenant and our faith confessions. So we have the covenant, the word of God, and we have our faith confessions. Again, we believe, therefore we speak. We having the same spirit of faith. Faith call it those things which be not as though they were. The just shall live by his faith. So we are to speak words of faith. The Bible said, hold fast the profession of of our faith. So we are faith people. We speak faith. We talk faith. We don't allow doubt and unbelief to come out of our mouth because the Bible said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. And the Bible said thou art snared by the words of our mouth. The Bible said a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth or the fruit of his lips. 
So we understand that if we want our lives to see good days and to be satisfied with life, then we must not speak gal, not speak evil, but speak faith. Number four, we said we break the jaws or the, the jawbone and the teeth of the devil by potent testimonies. We use our testimonies. David knew that if he beat the lion, he beat the bear, he could defeat Goliath. You and I have enough testimonies in our arsenals to know what God will do, to know his power, to know his glory, to know his splendor, to trust him, to know that if God brought me through last year, he's going to bring me through this year. If God took care of me last month, he's going to take care of me this month and in the future. We understand that we have testimonies that we can use to overcome the enemy. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, amen, how that without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Then in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible speaks that of the fact that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. The Bible tells us, amen, in Hebrews chapter 11, how that Abraham overcame through faith, Moses overcame through faith, Gideon overcame through faith, Abel used his faith, Sarah used her faith. All of these men and women of old, they overcame and got the victory through and by their faith. So we use testimonies of what God has done in our lives and what God has done in others' lives to defeat and break the jaw and the teeth of the enemy. Number, number uh, five, we break the jaw and the teeth of the enemy with our fist. Notice, to break somebody's jaw, you usually don't use your one finger or two fingers. You ball your fist up and you break their jaw. A fist, five. Amen. That deals with the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. It also deals or represents amen. Five anointed others. Get you five brothers and sisters that, you know, are walking by faith. Amen. Call them up. Get them to cheer you on. Get them to keep you stirred in the Lord. You ought to know at least five reliable saints that love God, that love his word, amen, that you are able to be fortified as you talk to them and they talk to you. That's why we're talking about iron sharpening iron, Facebook and YouTube. These are platforms that we can use to build relationships of faith. Amen. If you know there's somebody saved and you see the comments that many are putting down below, amen, there are comments of faith. So you can watch how they're talking and listen at how they're talking and know that they are people that are talking faith. Also, five deals with grace and favor. You take your fist and you punch the devil in his mouth, break his jaw, break his teeth because you understand you have the favor of God, that you are what you are by the grace of God and God's favor is on you. And number six, praise and worship being full of the Holy Ghost. These are the six ways we, we spoke to you about breaking the jaw and the teeth of the devil. But tonight, we're trying to help you to understand that it's time for you and I to stay mad at the devil. Now, why am I talking about this? Because oftentimes, amen, many of us, amen, we give the devil slack. We don't keep our feet on the devil's neck. We at one moment looking at what he does and looking at how he does stuff, we be mad at him. We are we are mad at him. And then all of a sudden we act like he's our buddy. We act like he's our friend. You got to stay mad at the devil. Now, I'm not talking about staying mad at people. We know that people should be forgiven. We know that people should be extended mercy towards them. But I'm talking about the devil. Listen at what I'm talking about. When I talk about the devil, I'm dealing with these two names he's called by basically in the Bible. One is Satan. The word Satan is the Greek masculine noun Satanus. Say that with me. Satanus. Satanus, which means accuser, 
adversary, one who opposes another in purpose or act. So we understand that we, are, we should be mad at this accuser, this one who opposes us in purpose and in action. The name given to the prince of evil spirits. How can we not hate or be mad at the prince of evil spirits? He incites apostasy from God and to sin. In other words, he wants you and I to walk away from God through some lie and through some deception. Or he wants us to walk away from God through some sin. The word sin comes from the Greek word, which really means to miss the mark. He doesn't want us to hit the target. He wants us to miss the mark. So how can we not, I mean, how can we like somebody or embrace somebody who wants us to leave God and wants us to miss the target? We should hate him. We should be mad at him. And we got to stay mad at him and stay angry at him so we can keep up the fight. So we can keep up the warfare so we won't drop our guard and start playing with him and lose the battle against him. Listen, this word Satan is the one or he who circumvents men by wiles or by tricks or by scheme. In other words, he tries to cut us off at the path from reaching our destiny and achieving our goals and fulfilling the will of God for our lives through schemes and tricks. He's always up to something evil and corrupt. Let me say it again. Your adversary, Satanus or Satan, is always up to something evil, wicked and corrupt. He is the adversary of God in Christ. By his demons, he is able to take possession of men and inflict them with diseases. See, through his what? Other help from these other demon spirits, he's able to take possession of men. Some men and women are demon possessed. And also he tries to inflict people with diseases. So cancer comes from Satan. This pandemic comes from Satan. All diseases, none of them are coming from God. None of them are the will of God for man. The will of God for man is for man to be healed. But this wicked one called Satan, this wicked one called the devil is out to oppose our healing. And I get into that some more. Listen, the Greek word for devil is the adjective diabolus or diabolus is spelled D-I-A-B-O-L-O-S, which means false accuser, slanderer, one who opposes the cause of God. So how can we not hate someone who is a slanderer, who is accuser of the brother, who is diabolical, who is always throwing something. It's like somebody constantly hitting you on your shoulder or in the same spot. Notice how you feel when you're afflicted with disease. It's like the same spot. The enemy is hitting you and hitting you and hitting you and hitting you in that same spot. Eventually you get sore or eventually it brings pain to the point that he wants you to give up on your healing. But never give up on your healing. It's the will of God for you to be healed. It's the will of God for you to walk free. Don't ever give up the fight of faith. Because why? You got to stay mad at the devil. Hate him for what he's doing. Causing rape. Causing murder. Causing thievery. Causing all these bad things to happen to people. People ask the question. Even some books have been written. Why does good things, I mean bad things, happen to good people? Because the devil don't care whether you good or bad. He takes advantage of people's lack of knowledge. He takes advantage of people's ignorance of who he is and what he's doing. So to win against your enemy, you got to be wise. Through the scriptures, God makes us wiser than the enemy. Through the holy word of God, we're able to overcome him 
and defeat him, but we must stay mad at the enemy. All right, say that with me. Write that down somewhere. I'm mad at the devil. Come on, you need to put that down. Type that in. I'm mad at the devil. I'm not laughing at what he's doing. I'm mad about what he's doing. I'm not laughing at what how he's taking advantage of people. I'm mad. I am angry at the devil. I hate the devil. Come on, you need to put that down. Yeah, I hate the devil. He's not to be your friend. He's not your buddy. He's not someone you want to keep company with. You need to cast him out. You need to throw him out. Amen. Get him out of your presence because why? He is your adversary. Hallelujah. Listen at 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. It says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, the word destroy here means to abolish or to unfasten or to untie, to loosen one. So we know that Jesus came on the scene to abolish, to get out of the way, the works of the devil, to unloosen people or to untie people, to set them free from the works of the devil. Now notice the works of the devil. The word for works is the Greek noun ergon. Say that with me. Ergon. E-R-G-O-N. Which means the tall as an effort or occupation. It means the deeds of the devil, the doing of the devil, the labor of the devil, the business of the devil, the employment of the devil, that which one undertakes to do. It means the enterprise of the devil, the undertaking of the devil, any product, whatever. In other words, anything that has to do with the devil, Jesus came on the scene. He was manifested to unloosen you. To untie you. So guess what? If there's a pain in your body, if there's sickness in your body, don't ever doubt for one moment that God doesn't want you free from it. He wants you free from it. He wants you healed. He wants you delivered. Because why? This is the work of the devil. The tallings of the devil. This word works means anything accomplished by hand. It means the art and the industry or the mind. So anything that comes from Satan's mind is wicked, corrupt, and evil. So therefore, when you see people getting shot in the street, we hear about these shootings at schools and stuff. Know that these are the works of the devil. These are the arts of the devil. These are the things that come from the mind of the devil. He conjured that whole thing up. He conjured the whole thing up to make you sick, to make you hurt, to make pain come in your body. Now, you and I must not give place to him by not taking care of our bodies, by not eating right, by lifting the wrong stuff. All of these things cause you to give place to the devil. But thank God you can be restored and the power of God can come in and move and make things right back stronger than they were before because that's the power of God. Hallelujah. Listen at 1 John 3 and 8 in the Amplified Classic. It says, but he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil, takes his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated the divine law from the beginning. The reason the son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo. Did I tell you that word means to undo? Luo. Amen. It's L-Y-O or L-U-O. Luo, which means to destroy, to loosen, and to dissolve. Hallelujah. The works of the devil, or the works the devil has done. So everything that the devil has done Jesus came on the scene to loosen people, to untie people, to set them free. 
You know the story of the woman who was bowed together, could in no wise lift up herself. Jesus came and saw the woman and said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. They said, man, God, what is he doing? Jesus said, wait a minute. Y'all, if y'all got an animal, y'all will get the animal out. Don't care whether it's a Sabbath day or not. He said, oh, not this woman be loose, seeing she is the daughter of Abraham. Aren't you the child of Abraham? Yeah, if you be Christ, you Abraham seed. Shouldn't you be free from pain? Shouldn't you be free from evil? Shouldn't you be free, be free from toil? Shouldn't you be from things that cause annoyance in your body? Of course you should. And God wants you to be well. Look at Matthew 8 verses 5 through 7. It says, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lied at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. Notice this man's servant was at home, sick, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Notice if God was the one making people sick, he would have said, oh, it's the will of God. Let him stay that way. Oh, he must have done something. No, Jesus didn't say that. This man had a servant. It wasn't his son. It wasn't his mama. It wasn't. It was just someone who served him. But he didn't want to see his servant at home grievously tormented. Now, listen at what the word tormented is in the Greek. The word tormented here in the Greek is the verb B-A-S-A-N-I-Z-O. B-A-S-A-N-I-Z-O. Basandizo which means pain, tall, to be tossed, to be vexed, to torture, to vex with grievous pains of the body and the mind, or the mind, to be harassed, distressed. It is of those who at sea are struggling with a headwind. You know, like the wind, it tosses things around. Well, that's how the devil, he wants you tossing and turning you with a headache, tossing and turning with a leg pain, tossing and turning with a back pain, tossing and turning because there's some pain he got in your chest, some pain he got in your arm, some pain he got in your body. Well, God wants you free from that. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But we know what happened. The story, the man stopped Jesus and said, wait a minute, Jesus. You don't have to come up under my roof. Speak the word only and my servant shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Speaking the word will cause wholeness to come on our lives. Confessing the word, but you got to stay mad, not at God, because God ain't making you sick. God ain't making your loved one sick. Stay mad at the devil. The one who was diabolical, the one who's got evil schemes and plans and wicked, staying mad. That's what we ought to be mad. Seeing how the devil not took some of our loved ones early that should still be walking around here on earth. Took them out with cancer, took them out with OD and on drugs, took them out with some other evil. We should be mad at the devil, but you got to get mad at him. You got to be mad at him. We good at getting mad at people. Somebody tonight, you mad at your husband, but you ain't mad at the devil. You mad at your child, but you ain't mad at the devil. You mad at your wife, but you ain't mad at the devil. You mad at somebody in church, but you ain't mad at the devil. You mad at somebody on the job, but you ain't mad at the devil. And the person who's causing all the torment, pain, and hurt in your life is the devil. But somebody needs to be mad at the devil, angry at the devil. And then you got to learn how to stay mad at the devil. It's the devil who wants you in jail. It's the devil who wants you in prison. It's the devil who wants your child in prison. It's the devil who's trying to get your child thrown out of school. It's the devil. You got to get mad at the devil who's trying to divide our country, who's trying to mess up everything that's good and healthy and wholesome for humanity. Somebody got to get mad at him and then stay mad at him. Hallelujah. See, when God gets you out of mess, you got to still stay mad at the person 
who got you in the mess in the first place. You got to stay mad at the devil. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter eight, verses 28 and 29. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm out of time. I got to stop. I didn't know my time had gone. Look at this, though. Matthew 8, 28 and 29 says, and we was come into the other side, into the country of Gergenesis. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce. Notice these people were demon possessed and they were exceeding fierce so that no man might pass by that way. Everybody was scared to go that way because these demons was out there messing with people, tormenting people. And the Bible said, and behold, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Notice these demons are crying out of these men asking Jesus, why are you come hither to torment us? Before time. Oh, my goodness. See, Jesus tormented the devil. You know why? Jesus didn't like the devil. And guess what? The devil didn't like Jesus. And guess what? The devil don't like you. You just got to not like him. You got to hate him, despise him, be angry at him, be upset at him for taking your mother away, for taking your son away for killing your son in that car wreck, for killing your child, amen, for destroying your cousin, for destroying your daddy, you got to get him back, make him pay. You got to stay mad at the devil. Even in my book called Death, A Need to Understand, there's a certain section I got in there on page 40 and 41, some reasons to hate the devil, some reasons to be mad at the devil. Amen. Why? Because cancer, breast cancer and lung cancer. Who you think causing that? Breast cancer. Women having to lose their breasts. Take their breasts away. Take away part of their breasts or take both of their breasts away due to some ugly disease called cancer. We ought to hate the devil for doing that. Hate the devil for causing that. What another reason to hate the devil? For high blood pressure. Think about how many people are on pills, amen, and got disease in their body because their blood pressure is high. Oh, my God. Don't you know this ain't just natural? This is something supernatural. We got to hate the devil for this. Oh, can I go over time a little bit tonight? Oh, I can't, can I? I told you 30 minutes and I got to stop. We're going to pick back up here and we're going to show you next time what does Satan use to cause us not to hate him or cause us uh, our hatred to go away and subside. He using something because more people will hate him if he wasn't using something. And I'm going to show you what he's using and then I'm going to give you Three powerful ways to stay mad at the devil. Somebody in this hour got to rise up and say, I hate the devil. I'm mad at the devil. I'm not threatened by him. I'm not scared of him. I am willing to confront what he's doing because I'm a son of God. And Jesus, the, the, the firstborn among many brethren, the son of God, for this purpose was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And God wants the sons of God today, you and I, to manifest, to show up and destroy, untie, unloosen people from the works of the devil. If there's a pain in your body tonight, if there's sickness in your body tonight, the sons of God, we're here tonight to command the devil to loose you and to let you go free tonight in the authority of Jesus name. Be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Devil, get your hand off God's property. Get your hand off God's daughter. Get your hand off God's son. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be whole, be restored in Jesus' name. Now you praise God for that victory and thank him that you hate the devil and you love God. 
Woo, I'm going to get into this next week. Can't wait to get into it. You who are watching me tonight and you're not saved, give us a call, 252-563-5382. I'll be glad to pray with you and help you get to know the Lord. I'm going to lead you to Christ. Amen. After this program is over, 252 563 Five, three, eight, two. Oh my God. I can't wait till next Thursday. I can't wait till next sharp points because we're going to light up the fire. Hallelujah. As we talk to you about how to stay mad at the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hit that like button. Hit that follow button. Amen. So that every time we come on this platform, you will know about it. You will be alerted and you can stay up with this message. This is a potent message for this season in which we're in. We need to hate the right person. Stop hating black folks and hate the devil. Stop hating white folks and hate the devil. Let's stop hating flesh and blood and let's stay mad and hate the devil. These messages can be viewed again on Facebook and they can also be watched on YouTube. Check them out again. Go back and listen at Breaking the Jaw and the Teeth of the Devil and listen at this message from beginning to end. We are people who love God, but we hate the devil and we're mad at him. We're angry at him. That, that's right. Amen. That's right. Hit it. Share. Let your family members know because some people don't have Facebook, but they do have YouTube. Let them know so they can listen at this word and they can know that sickness and disease. God is not putting that on them. God ain't trying to test them out. God wants us well. Write down these times every Tuesday night, 730. Bible study night. We study this word. Hallelujah. And every Thursday night, sharp points. Woo! Yeah. 30 minutes of power. 30 minutes of glory. 30 minutes of splendor. Oh, and every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, don't forget, press your way. Amen. Meet us at 936 Amal Avenue. Hallelujah. A church alive is worth the drive. In Tarboro, North Carolina, the feast of the Lord is going on. The glory is falling and God is in, empowering us through his wisdom, through his knowledge and through his understanding. Hallelujah. 1030. Amen. You can watch us here on Facebook live from the sanctuary, bringing you a dynamic word. Amen. We're talking about stepping up. Woo. And it's been powerful. Hallelujah. And we're going to try to finish that message up this week. It's going to be great. Amen. Now, there are several ways you can give to NOLCC, which is our ministry. If you would like to be a blessing to our ministry, maybe there are some, some of you who are saved, but you haven't found a local church yet that you can say, this is my home. Amen. Listen, here's how you can sow uh, and give to our ministry. You can give tithes and offering to our ministry. Here's how you do it is by writing out a check or money order to Newness of Life Christian Center. That's right. And you mail it to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Also, amen, you can now go to our giving app. Our giving app has changed. I know some of you used to go to Guild Plus Church app, but now you got to go to Vanco. That's right. Vanco mobile app. Amen. All right. That's not my name and that's not my app. That's just the name of the app that sounds like my name. I told you I'm a blessed man. Vanco mobile app. Go to Vanco mobile app. Download the Vanco mobile app. Amen. V-A-N-C-O. Amen. And then type in Newness of Life Christian Center and the church will pop up and you can sow a seed to our ministry. Download the Vanco mobile app and type in Newness of Life Christian Center and the church will pop up. Amen. The company has just changed over. It's not my doing. It's the company's doing. Amen. And so be a blessing to our ministry. Now to bless us personally again, September 20th was my birthday. Amen. So we're giving you one more chance. Newness of Life will get one more chance this past Sunday and then we won't mention it again to next year. Amen. But at any rate, you can get a chance to sow into our lives with good ground. Amen. Or maybe you just want to sow into ministry because you're being helped so much. You're being informed so much. To bless us personally, 
go to Cash App, go to the Cash, go to your Cash App and type in the dollar sign R E V S H A R P E. Hit the Cash sign, the dollar sign. And then type in R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. Amen. And my wife and I, we will appreciate whatever you want to give to us. And we will pray for you that you receive a harvest on your giving. Remember, amen. All we need to do is specify that, hey, this is for you and your wife. Be blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen. We would appreciate it. Also, you can order our books. That's right. We got 13 powerful books. 13 powerful books to be a blessing to you. Our latest three. One is called Death, A Need to Understand. The other one is called Amen, uh, Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. And another one is entitled Let the Prophet Speak, Show Us Our Way. Listen, when you buy books, you, can, you got that information at your disposal anytime you need it. So you can go back over. I go back over them all the time. Amen. Especially this one right here called Where Are Those Miracles Releasing the Power of God? And then you can get this one for women called Women of Substance Taking New Steps and New Dimensions as well as this one to men. I am my brother's keeper. I'm not telling you all 13, but give us a call. We'll tell you all 13 of them. You can decide on which ones you want. Give us a call by calling our ministry at 252 Six four one zero zero nine eight two five two six four one zero zero nine eight. We wrote all thirteen of them. No ghost writer. We wrote them so we know what's in it is potent, powerful, and straight from heaven, straight from God. Hallelujah to bless your life. Again, thank you for watching us tonight. Stay mad at the devil. That's right. This whole week, go to the house of God. Hallelujah. The reason why I'm called to preach and do what I do is because the devil took my daddy at 48 years old and I'm making him pay. Every time I help people come off drugs and alcohol and cigarettes, I'm getting back at the devil for doing that to my dad. And you have some loved ones, too, that you lost. You ought to be mad at the devil. You ought not play games with him. Get mad at the devil and stay mad. And we're going to show you how to do it in this teaching. Until next time, be blessed of the Lord. Have a fantastic Thursday and Sunday morning. Meet us at 936 Amal Avenue in the city of Tarboro. If you can't meet us, watch us on Facebook Live. I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed. Watch us at 1030 and get the word of God imparted into your spirit. Have a blessed night.